Hey there, everybody. Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, and we are playing History Maker Baseball. This is game four of the 1919 World Series. We are in the top of the seventh inning. The score is three to two with the Reds leading. Probably the best game the Reds have played out of the four. Um, the White Sox or Black Sox lead the series three games to none. And uh, it's Jimmy Ring versus Eddie Seacott. So we are in the top of the seventh inning, and it's going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, the pitcher, and then Rath, the leadoff hitter, and Darbert, the first baseman, who bats second. Just going over the lineups for the Reds, Rath, Darbert, and Grow, Roush, Duncan, and Kopp, uh, Neal, Wingo, and, of course, the pitcher, Ring, batting ninth. For the White Sox, it's Leibold. Leading off in right field, Collins at second base, batting second, batting third is Weaver, the third baseman. Cleanup is Shoeless Joe in left field. Batting fifth is Happy Felsch in center field. First baseman is Gandel. Uh, batting sixth, batting seventh is Risberg, the shortstop, Swede Risberg. Batting eighth is the catcher, Shock, And batting ninth is Seacott, the pitcher. All right, so let's continue. We're rolling here. And that's going to be a 4-6-6. And it's the pitcher ring who's batting. 4-6-6 control. He's double control. So it's going to be, ah, it's going to be a single here in this case. So the pitcher ring bounces one up the middle and it gets through into center field for a hit. And he's double control, so he's going to give up another hit. So that's back-to-back -back singles for the Reds here in the top of the seventh inning. And it's going to be Jake Daubert. And Jake Daubert's going to bunt, so we're rolling one die. That's a three, and that's going to be a, a three is going to be a good bunt. Who's a two? It is to the third baseman. So it's five, four. And runners advance, so now you're going to have runners on second and third. They're going to walk row intentionally to load the bases. And they're going to play the corners in in the middle halfway. Try to get out of this sticky situation with a one out. Here's a pitch. And that's a 1-5-5. Five, five. And a 1-5-5 five, five is a blank under the pitcher column. Ask me if he's a home run king. It's a fly out to center. But with a one, the runner will hold on the fly out. So it's a, it's a ball that's hit shallow, shallow center field, and the pitcher at third base is not going to attempt to score. The Reds are up 3-2. to two. That run would be an insurance run, and it would help, but it's not meant to be. With two outs now, here's Duncan, Pat Duncan. He's a right-handed hitter. Today, he's 0-2 with a walk, batting in the top of the fourth inning against Eddie Seacott, probably the ace of the Chicago staff. And here's a pitch, and that's a 1 5 5. 1 5 5 is a blank under the pitcher. Home run king again, a fly ball to center field, and that will end the inning. So, no runs on two hits, three left, and they fail to capitalize on a bases loaded one out situation. And we move to the bottom of the seventh, seventh inning stretch. So, do your thing. Yes, sir. -y. And a little crowd effects in the background. And it's going to be the pitcher, Eddie Seacott. Now I'm pushing to allow these starters to go the distance, regardless. And if you look at the if you look at the box scores, pretty much that's the way it was. 266. All right, it's a 266, and we're looking at a runner on first throw now, lead off batter. Yes, and that's a check swing, a little blooper, and that drops in for a base hit for the pitcher. So the pitchers are both contributing to uh, their cause. Leibold is up next, and he's going to square the bunt. And that's a five, which will be a good bunt. And who's a two? And that's a four. That'll be the pitcher. So it's a sack, one, four, and the runner moves up into scoring position. So Seacott is in scoring position. He is not a a uh, stoic runner, so that's an advantage. So Leibold with a good bunt, and here comes one out, Eddie Collins. Tying run is at second base. Jimmy Ring 
pitching extremely well today. Here's a pitch, and it's a one, two, three, one, two, three, both flashies, not flash. So we have to ignore the pitcher column. Next is the batter column, which is blank. It's going to be a ground ball to short unless the red is a one and it is not. So it's a ground ball to short. He's at second, so he will hold. Now there is a chart. Uh, ground ball lead run, lead uh, is a one. Runner on second. The ball is hit to... Yeah. Uh, ground out base running rule. Base is empty. It's not based on where it's hit. And it should be based on where it's hit. Better pitcher. I'm gonna hold the. You know what? It's uh, from third from third base. It's 90 percent. I think it's 80 percent from shortstop. So let's say two out of the 30 is 66 uh, percent. We're gonna say a one will allow him to move. Nope. Okay. So he will stay at second base. He will hold there. And it's Weaver. Buck Weaver. Buck Weaver today is one for two with a sack. And here's a pitch from Ring. Jimmy Ring. 2-2-6 two, two, and 2-2-6. Two, 2-2-6 two, six. Two, two, six is a hit by pitch, and it is. So he gets plunked. And that's going to put runners on first and second. So Weaver. Gets it in the ribs, does not rub it, goes directly to first base, does not pass go, does not collect his 200. And it's going to be Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson, shoeless Joe Jackson, lefty hitter, and he's a semi-hero, semi-champion, semi-scrapper, semi-patient, and a good eye. Gold fielder and an icon. Love this guy. All right, so uh, he's got a big opportunity here with two outs. Runners on first and second. Scores three to two Reds. I didn't play. I didn't uh, present the whole game this time around simply because uh, the games were taking me way too long and some of the innings were very very long, and I was kind of getting. It was hard for me to to do that all online. It was easy, and this game. Um, besides, I'm learning the game a little bit more. Remember, I haven't played this game in maybe a few months, so it takes me to get into the rhythm and so on. And this game went much much faster. So it's just about playing a few games, and sometimes I know it it, uh, it frustrates guys because they get a new game, and it's taking them forever, and they don't know where anything is, and, it, and then they just say, you know what, I'm going back into my comfort zone. But there's some really, so there's some new games, the designers are really outstanding, where they can give you an advanced game with the flow, the fluidity, and the smoothness, and the limited roles of a basic game. And one of the games that does that is the Fall Classic game. It uh, gives you a lot of depth, a lot of complexity, a lot of little unique um, details, but it does it as if you were playing, you know, Appa Basic or um, uh, Stratomatic Basic. Now, it doesn't do it in, 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 it's not packaged to seem that way. So you may look at the package, you may look at the cards and may seem a little bit overwhelming. And, uh, and that, that's, I think, the major issue with that game. I, I don't think it's packaged well. Um, it, just a lot of information is just thrown in there. But once you get into the flow of the game, it's, it's second nature. It's intuitive. Oh. There's really very, very little um, oh. that you have to look up. And if you watch any of my videos, you'll see me playing right through it. I finish games in you know 20 minutes easily. And, and you have a lot of uh, details and, you know, even the outfield assists, you know, come out almost identical to what uh, actually happened. So they got, you know, if you look at the card, there's a lot of ratings that go into producing those cards. I mean, a lot of ratings, but the, the, it's not in any way clumsy or, or plotting. You know, it's, it's very smooth and, and one roll pretty much will give you the result. Anyway. I digress. Um, so here is uh, Joe Jackson, and back from the mound comes Wingo from talking to Jimmy Ring. I love these names. You know, I'm not a big uh, dead ball era guy. I know uh, Anthony from uh, uh, Bleacher Bums Gaming does a lot of that, and, uh, and and a couple other guys do. I know that uh, some of that is also done by Kurt Berglund, and some of that is also 
done by RJL and, and a couple of the guys uh, play the older seasons. I'm more 60s, 70s, 80s guy. So you'll see, and some a little bit modern every so often, but I don't like the substitutions. Anyway, uh, Joe Jackson. This is Tony Porter, by the way, Cards and Dice TV. You join us at uh, Facebook group, uh, Universal Baseball Association. And uh, you're going to get information that is going to, you know, help you bring your tabletop games to life for sure. And it's uh, a very, very, very eclectic mix of information that you're going to get. You're going to get, you know, streams uh, on uh, of actual radio games played in the 70s suggested to you. You know, um, I, I play those as I'm rolling dice, you know, so if I'm playing the 70s, I'll have a game playing in the background that's from the 70s and i'll listen to the players and and i'll listen to the old style commercials um you'll get just advertisements that were sometimes hilarious and sometimes just very nostalgic you'll get um you know ebay um uh, lots that are going for nothing and look like junk but at the end it could be you know a uh um, a, a diamond in the rough is what I call them. I bought sets were for, you know, a hundred bucks. I ended up with all the 70s sets and about 70% were in pristine condition. There were some rough cards and I had to like get an eraser and clean them up. They're dirty from handling, but you know, I got seven 70 sets for about a hundred dollars and that was pretty cool, complete sets. And, uh, anyway, so, so you're going to get all kinds of information and, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's all, it's all consumer driven. It's all member driven. You know, we have no issues. We're not constantly uh, repeating the rules, you know? And so if you like a place that is kind of constantly restricting your freedom of thought and your freedom of, you know, participation, and that's fine. You're welcome to that. And there's plenty of sites where you can go to do that. You know, Universal Baseball Association is not that at all. It's very, very open. It's open to everybody's ideas, and we get into good discussions there, and and we're allowed to disagree, and uh, and and it works very, very beautifully. There uh, are very, very few, if any, you know, um, um, situations where we have to step in and do any type of admin duties. It's really the the admin, all the ad, all the members are the admin. And uh, it's it's a great great site, and um, and it's called ba uh, Universal Baseball Association. So check it out. Anyway, all right, well, let's go to Joe Jackson, Shoeless Joe, with runners on first and second, two outs. Let's see what happens. Here's Jimmy Ring, and that's going to be a one two three, and a one two three is going to ask me if he's flash. He's not. And that's going to be a ground out unless the red is a one, and it is. And it's a ground out to short, and that's going to load the bases. It's booted by Kopp, so Kopp makes another error. E6, and that's going to load the bases here. The Reds need to win one. I mean, the Reds are down three games to none in a best of nine series. And that's an error by Cop. I think he's made an error in every single game. I mean, both shortstops have. And uh, bases are loaded. So that was a ball he should have handled. The fields, you know, back then were just terrible. Not manicured at all. And uh, the gloves were super tiny and just not not. So uh, what are you going to do? It is what it is. Here's Happy Felsch. Happy Felsch today. What is he doing? He is 0 for 2, 0 for 3. He's 0 for 3. And uh, here's Ring. Jimmy Ring. And that is a 144. Uh-oh. I don't know what that means. Flash. He is not Flash. It's going to ask me, is Felsch a hero? He is not a hero. It's going to be a ground ball unless he's a whiffer. He's not. It bounced to short. This time, shortstop will handle it. Flips to the second baseman, uh, Rath. And Rath steps on the bag. And that, my friends, retires the side. So, they leave the bases loaded. What a game this is. No runs. One hit. Uh Three left, and we go to the top of the eighth inning. And let's uh, fast forward this game. It's going to be Duncan. Oh, no, it's going to be Koff, Larry Koff. Now, they spelled it with an A. It's really with an O. You can double check that, but it is an O. Here's a pitch from Eddie Seacott, and it's a 2-3-5. And the 2-3-5 is going to be, uh, is he eager? He is eager, and he's not a whiffer, so the eager batter will bounce a single past the diving shortstop. 
into left field. So cough is on, and we're going to get a bunt. Do a lot of bunts in this game because it is 19. Uh, 19. That's a five. It's a good bunt. Who is a two? And uh, four is the pitcher. So it's a sack, and it's going to be one four. Runner to second. So they're looking for that insurance run. That's really key right here, right now, for the Reds uh, in the top of the eighth. They're looking, and it's Ivy Wingo. And you know what? Uh, they're they're going to walk Ivy Wingo and allow the pitcher. And we're going to let uh, we're going to let Jimmy Ring bat. I know you're saying, wow, he's nuts. No, but we're going to let Jimmy ring bat and hope for an error because um, I could bring in. Hold on a second. Let me, let me. Uh... All right, we're going to bring in Sherry McGee to pinch hit for the pitcher. Love that name, Sherry McGee. Hilarious with an S-H-E-R-R-Y. And um, all right, Rose on first and second, and it's Seacott who is really the the ace. So we're not looking to chain to pull Seacott at all. And it's first and second, one out, top of the eighth. It's three to two Reds. Reds are down in the series, three games to none. So they need something big here, and that's going to be a three five six, a three five six. Three, five, six. Are they the same? He's a righty, and he's a righty, and that's strike three. So it would have been nice if I had brought in a lefty. But it's Sherry McGee is the guy I constantly see. If you look at the box scores, you'll constantly see him pinch hitting. And uh, so it is what it is. He strikes out. Big strikeout for Seacott. Tough name to pronounce if you just look at straight up how, how it's, uh, how it's um, spelled, right? But it's pronounced Seacott. And um, that's two outs, first and second. And now it's Maury Rath, the second baseman for Cincinnati. He's a scrapper, semi-patient, and a good eye. And here's a pitch from Seacott. And that's a 1-2-4. And a 1-2-4 says control. He is double control. And that's bounced to the shortstop. And that'll be it. So Seacott comes up huge here in the top of the eighth inning. And he prevents any... Uh, the Reds from scoring another uh, an insurance run, and we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. So it's going to be Luke. Hay. Where is he? Where did he go? Uh, it's you know they bring in the same guys, and so now it's going to be the pitcher Luke. Hay. I don't know what I just did with him. That's annoying. Huh? Ah, is that it? No. All right. All right, Chick Gandel versus Dolph Luque, and you can see him here. He's a star, and he's semi-control. And here's the pitch, and that is a 1-1-2, one, one, and that'll be – he is not flash. So 1-1-2, one, one, we, we bypass the pitcher column. Ask me if he's a sat sack. He is not, and that's going to be check with scorer. So we're going to roll one die, check with the scorer. The scorer says – I think we just rolled a five, right? And that's going to be an error charged to the second baseman. If he's a lefty and he's a righty, so it's going to be an error on the shortstop. E6. So another error on Cop. And uh, Gandel is on at first. His running ability is blank. And it's going to bunt. And it's a three. And it's out at first. Who's a two? It is two first baseman. So runner to second on the sack. And here's uh, the catcher, Shock. I'm gonna let the we're gonna let Shock bat. Here's a pitch. And it's a 125, and a 125 says struggler, no patient. He's semi-patient. The side of the die says no, so it's gonna be a ground out unless he's a whiffer, and he is not, so it's a ground out to third. And on a one, he will advance, and nope. So G5 over to first, so that's a grounder to the third baseman, Grow, and fires the first in time. Looks the runner back to second. And here's Seacott. This is an interesting uh, situation here. So I bring a pinch hitter with a runner in scoring position, and then I got to go to the for that ninth inning. You know what? I'm going to try it. All right, pinch hitting is going to be Shano Collins. 
and uh, there is basically the tying run is at second base here with two outs. So Seacott is out. He's done. He went uh, eight innings, allowed three runs so far. Well, so far, he's allowed three runs in this game. And um, he, he did pretty well. He held his own. And let's see if the White Sox can come back for him. Here's the pitch by Dolph Luque. That's going to be a 1-1-2, one, one, and that's a flash. He is not. Ask me if Collins is a sad sack. He is not. And that's going to be check with scorer again. Oh, boy. Check with the scorer, and this is a six this time, and the scorer is going to be a ground ball. Uh, he's a righty, so it's going to be a ground ball to third, and it's booted, and that's going to load the bases. So another error by the Reds. They just seem not to want to. So that's going to put runners on first and third, not load the bases, but it's going to put runners on first and third. And that's nuts. Um, wow. How many errors is that? One? All right, three errors so far by the Reds. And errors by the White Sox. One, two. Two errors by the White Sox. Pretty crazy. Five errors. Okay. So uh, we go to Leibold. Now he's a good hitter. Nemo Leibold. He's a semi-hero, scrapper, patient, good eye. He's got it all going there. So Dolph Luque is in a bind. He's in a tight situation. He's in a predicament, if you will. And he's got uh, runners on first and third with two outs. And the runner on third is the tying run. And the Reds find themselves down in this series, three games to none. So there's a lot of pressure on Luque here to perform to come up big against Nemo Leibold. And on the other side, Leibold has an opportunity to be a hero. So a double here could potentially give the White Sox the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning. Let's see what happens. History Maker Baseball at its best. 124. 124, and that's going to be control. And and he is semi-controlled. Decided I said no. Eager. Libel is not eager, and that ball is ball four, and the, the, the bases are going to be loaded. Holy smokes. The bases are loaded. And up comes Eddie Collins, the second baseman for the notorious 1919 White Sox. There's been no funny business. I've had my eagle eye scouts everywhere making sure that uh, these players are, are as honest as uh, can be. And it's going to be Eddie Collins, bases loaded. And Dolph Luque is going to talk to his catcher now. A uh, Wingo, and um, they're having a conference at the mound, and in comes the shortstop Kopf and the second baseman, Ra uh, Rath, and there's two outs, bases loaded. The Reds find themselves up three to two here in the bottom of the eighth inning, and it's Eddie Collins, a left-handed hitter, and uh, let's do this. Here's the pitch, and that's going to be a 1-3-5. Now, that's going to take us to an unusual play. Holy smokes, and that's a red 1, a red 1 with a black 5. So we're going to have to roll two dice. It's a highlight reel, A, B, uh, A, B, A, B, A, B, depends if it's an even or if it's an odd. So it's going to be a 3-6. And that's going to be a highlight reel A, one hopper through short. Wild, so a, a one hopper through short. Wild throw on attempt to get the lead runner. Batter safe at second. Box and bogeys. So this is a tricky one. we got to make sense of this now. That's one of the issues with this game if... You're not comfortable figuring out these situations and, and you start questioning yourself. 
I don't, you know, I, I try to make sense of it and I'll do it right, in, you know, in, in, on stage and, um, you know, and then I'll leave it behind me. That's it. That's what happened. I don't question myself. I don't think about it. I don't consider, wow, the Reds could have won the game if I had kind of, I'm going to make the most sense I can about it. I really don't care if the Reds win or if the Sox win. I usually don't care whether I'm playing the Mets or not. I'm really playing for the the experience as opposed to who wins. Now, I'm not going to say it's fun to lose 110 games like I did when I replayed the 79 Mets with payoff pitch by myself at three in the morning. You know, I streamed a lot of those lonely games and there was like one watcher or two watchers or three watchers if I was lucky. And that was historic, uh, hysterical because I got a chance to at least chit chat with some of them. The games were fairly short, though, because payoff pitch plays very, very fast. Um, OK, so let's go back to the game. Three, six. It's a one hopper through short. So it gets by the shortstop. Now, the we're going to say the left fielder makes a wild throw on the attempt to get the lead runner. Well, he's not going to get the lead runner because the lead runner is at third base and he's going to score. So then the next lead runner would be the runner on second, batter safe at second on a two base error. So basically, it's going to be a two base. It's going to be a we're going to do a single and an error. That's what we're going to do. We're the I'm going to be the um, I'm going to be the scorer and I'm going to give him a single. And an error on the left fielder. The runner on first is going to stop. Two runs will come in. So the White Sox have taken a 4-3 to three lead here in the bottom of the eighth. And we're going to give them... Um, you know what? We could even... Tricky situation. Oh. We're going to say that the runner on third wouldn't have scored if it not if it were not for the error. So we're going to give him one RBI. And that'll be yeah, one RBI. The other run is going to score on the error. And then um, it's going to be second and third with Weaver coming up, Buck Weaver. And we're going to pitch to Weaver rather than pitch to Um, Shoeless Joe. Now, he's a semi-struggler. Luke, Luke is a semi-struggler right now. So let's see what happens. Buck Weaver. And that is a 2-2-3. Two, two, Got to go back to the regular chart. A 2-2-3. Two, two, Ask me if he's wild. He's not wild. Uh, slugger or utility. Um, he is neither slugger or utility. And that's going to be a single to left. On a two, runners advance one base on singles. Nobody's uh, is Collins active. Collins is semi-active. The side of the die says he's active. So he will, two runs will score. Two runs will score and Weaver drives in two. And it is six to three now. The White Sox have come back from a three to two deficit, and they've taken a six to three lead. And now four players, including uh, well, it started off with an error and uh, a walk and two singles, is going to uh, make Luque a struggler. He's going to face Joe Jackson. And that's a one, two, five. And a struggler. He is a struggler. That's a crack to the fence. Oh boy. A crack to the fence chart. But he is a semi scrapper and he is a scrapper. So he's only gonna get a a two, and that's gonna be a single. On a two active run. So it's going to be a single. Runner will stop at second. So Joe Jackson with a single. Here's Happy Felsch. <clears throat> Three, four, five. Iron Catcher, no. Um, Cincinnati Catcher is not. 
uh, Wingo. He is not iron or anything. Three, four, five. A good eye. Is he a good eye? He is a semi good eye. Decider die says no. It's going to be a strikeout. It's going to take us to the right now. Let me just write that right now. And it's a strikeout to end the inning. But unfortunately, they score four huge runs in the bottom of the eighth inning on one, two, three. Three hits, two error, three errors, and a walk. Wow. And they've taken a, the White Sox have taken a six to three lead. And it's last licks for the Reds here in the top of the ninth. It's going to be Daubert. And the new pitcher is going to be Erskine Mayer. Erskine Mayer. Love that name. And I keep saying that. Jake Daubert. I'm a, a newbie when it comes to these, you know, teams from the teens and, and so forth, the, the dead ball era. So Daubert is up. And uh, I guess you would consider 1919 still a dead ball era, I imagine. Um, not 100% sure, but it feels like it. Not much. Not many home runs are hit, that's for sure. All right, so we're going to have Erskine versus Daubert. Erskine is a semi-control. That's all he is against Daubert, who is a scrapper, semi-eager, and a good eye. And it's a 1-2-2. Two, two. Oh, wait. No, we have to go to the right now chart. And let's see. Right now, the last thing he did was bunt, so he's not going to have any any um, quality there. So that's going to be a 1-6 in the right now chart. Is that hot pitcher? No. Batter lines a clean single to second base. All right. So Daubert with a single. Here's Heine Grow, and he's going to swing away. And that's a 1 2 2. And a 1 2 2 is going to be Workman. No. Champer Whiffer. He is neither a champ nor a Whiffer. It's going to be a line out to third base. So he rips it and caught by the third baseman, Weaver. So he hit it right on the screws, ripped it down the line, and a nice leaping grab by the shortstop, um, the third baseman. What's his name? Dennis Weaver from the TV show. No, his name is Buck Weaver. And uh, that's one out. Next up is Ed Roush. With, uh, the Ed is with two Ds. I think that's the way they used to spell it. And it's a 136 and a 136. Ask me if he's an ace. He is not. Whiffer or cold. Ed Roush is not a cold. And he's not a whiffer either. Let's see, Ed Roush. He's not a whiffer. And that's going to be an infield drama. So we're going to roll two dice. We're going to drop two D6. And that is a 4 5 on the infield. Shortstop iron. The decided die says he is iron. So it's going to be safe at first on an error. And it's going to take us to chemistry. It's going to be E6, and that's another error for the Sox on Risberg. Wow. Make a lot of errors in this. Is that seven errors in this game? And uh, this period I know is famous. It's notorious for its errors. Uh, Duncan is up, with, and he's going to be the tying run. But uh, nobody has a home run. Nobody here can hit home runs. I mean, it's pretty crazy. All right. So we're gonna go. We're gonna be on chemistry, and here's a pitch, and that is a two-five. And the two-five is pitching team dissonance. No, otherwise it's a fly out to right. Okay, so that's two outs. And up comes Larry Kopf. Pitch from Meyer, and that's a one-three-five, and that's gonna be that's gonna be an, a a. a uh, an event mini chart umpire call with a one, I believe. So it's a one, a blue mini event. So we have to find, all right, we have to find the situation. It's runners on first and second. And we're going to get an umpire situation. The umpires are Billy Evans at first. At home is Bill Clem. At third base, it's Tom Connolly. And at second base, it's Hank O'Day. It's going to roll there. Time runners on first and second. And see what happens. Let's say 1-6 runners on first and second. 
Strict umpire at home. No, he's respected. Other umpires, ball two. Batter is still a bat. All right, so we go to the regular chart again. And we're going to roll all the dice. So I'm going much faster than I did. If you know, if you watch the first couple of games, I'm going much faster. 134. And uh, 134 asked me if he's a gold catcher. He's definitely, I don't think he's a gold catcher at all. Shock. I, had, I, I doubt it. No, he's not a gold catcher. Very unusual. Um, so it's uh, one. Uh, it's a 134 goal catcher, no champion. He's not a champion, and it's going to be outfield drama. So continue. The excitement continues. Let's see if they can come back here. Outfield drama. That's a 1-6, and a 1-6 is a right fielder stoic. So if the right fielder stoic, they're doomed. Let me tell you that right now. Well, and I don't think that Leibold, who's in right field, is stoic. But I could be wrong. He is not stoic. So that's a 1-6. No, he is not stoic. Otherwise, the right fielder makes a diving play of a line out. So it's ripped to right. And will it drop? No. Great catch by Leibold in right. And that is the ball game. The White Sox, they go up 4 nothing in this best of nine series. And they come back with four runs in the bottom of the eighth. They beat the Reds by a score of six, um, six to three. And let's check out the hits. Let's see how many hits the. Reds picked up. They picked up two there and one there. Another and another. All right, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight hits. Eight hits and four errors. Holy smokes. And for the White Sox, Black Sox, whatever you want to call them. It's going to be three hits, four, five, six, seven, eight hits. So both teams had eight hits. So it's uh, the White Sox win it. Six runs, eight hits, three errors versus the Reds. Three runs, eight hits, and four errors. So three there and four there. The win, I guess, is going to go to Seacott. He pitched outstandingly, and he was there. till the end, he was pinch hit for in that inning that they scored all the runs, so he will get the victory. That's the second victory of the series. And the loss, I guess, will go to Luque, who pitched, who started pitching in that inning. So he'll take the loss. And I think he's 0-1. And this is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. Hope you enjoyed the shorter presentation. I started in the seventh inning versus doing the whole game. It was just, it would take too long, these... Uh, First of all, I'm, I'm not familiar with the game, so I'm kind of relearning it. Um, I'm playing it to the best of my ability. If I make a, a mistake here or there, it's just part of human error, and it's the nature of the beast. But uh, overall, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with it, so I, this game went a lot faster than some of the other games. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the White Sox seem to dominate. I see the Reds as a team that is really not built to challenge the White Sox, who have a much better offense. Um, and I feel that they have the White Sox so far, I feel they have better pitching. Um, we'll see in game five what happens. Uh, I'm not sure who's coming up in game five, but that uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So if the White Sox win game five, that's it for the series. It's a best of nine series, 1919 World Series. I'm learning a lot about these teams, and I'm really, really enjoying it. This is uh, Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, History Maker Baseball. Remember to join the Facebook group. 
uh, Universal Baseball Association, where I guarantee you you'll find a lot of material that's going to be very, very interesting to you. Take care, guys. All right, I wish you the best.